Right, so what you've just seen there at the beginning of the video is my new um, 10 millimeter threaded drawbar to hold the chucks on the ML7 or the Super 7 if you have one of those. And in that example, you could see that I could do um, reverse spindle um, machining with the part off upside down on the front of the lathe and the chuck will not unscrew with this drawbar fitted. And another great thing you can use it for is doing um, thread cutting with the spindle in reverse and the uh, tool machining away from the headstock of the lathe. And this setup makes thread cutting a pleasure to do on the lathe because there's no chance of a crash and it is actually one of the safest methods you can use for thread cutting. And that's because you can do the thread cutting in a more relaxed way. You don't have to have the fast reactions uh, that you have to have when you do thread cutting in towards the headstock or the chuck. So to make this draw bar, you need a piece of 16 millimeter stainless steel bar, a piece of 30 millimeter diameter stainless steel bar, some 10 millimeter stainless steel studding, a washer, an ordinary nut, and one of these um, self-locking nuts. Plus you need some uh, brazing equipment or some welding equipment to put this piece on the end here to make it fail safe so that this part cannot come off. But if you haven't got any welding equipment or brazing equipment, you can actually make this assembly or this part here out of a piece of 30 millimeter diameter bar and turn it down so it's all one piece. So to show you how it works, I'll put it in the opposite way, but that's a very good fit on the bore of this chuck here, being 30 millimeter and the back plate has got a good length of thread so when it's screwed onto the spindle um, there's plenty of overhang here of unused thread when this one goes through the back plate it rests there and cannot pull through and when it's locked up it locks the chuck on absolutely solid and it is totally impossible to unscrew. Plus I've upgraded my MyFed ML7 um, handle at the back of the lathe or the mandrel that goes in the back of the lathe to accept 10 millimeter now so I can use the handle on this one as well. But if you haven't got a mandrel in the back of the uh, lathe like I've um, shown on mine all as you do is make up a small bush here with a lip that goes just inside the bore of the back of the spindle for the washer and nuts to lock down on. And I have made a video with an 8mm one of these in the past but this one is so much better and so much stronger being 10mm. And just before I go out into the workshop and show the basic machining operations for this one and the brazing of the end here, I'd just like to say that you can't do this setup on a 100mm or 4 inch chuck. It must be done on these 125 or the 130mm chucks. And that's because the 4 inch chucks are too small on the bore here and there's no shoulder basically to pull up on with the disc at the front here and if you have several different chucks like this the 125 millimeter type with these Myford ML7 or Myford Super 7 back plates you'll find that you only need one drawbar for them all and I've even used this one on my ER40 collet chuck setup so now I'll go out into the workshop and show you the basic machining operations and then the brazing of the end. 
Right, so the first thing that I do is put the 30mm diameter bar up in my collet chuck, um, centre drill and drill with a smaller drill to a certain depth and then the 12mm drill. I then part off five millimetre. I then put the 16mm diameter stainless steel bar up, centre draw the end and put a live centre in and then I turned down the diameter to suit the bore of the spindle. So when that's finished turned it's about 578 to 580 thou and that's to suit my spindle. I then put this in my chop saw and saw this section off. I then put it back up in the um, collet chuck with the centre drilled end sticking out and I drill for the 10 millimetre thread. and then start the thread off. And then I leave the thread or the tap in there and take it out and finish it off in the vise. So that's the thread finished and I've gone down at least an inch. I then turn it round again and put it the other way round in the collet chuck and face off and turn to suit the disc that I made earlier. And I've put a large chamfer on this face here so that when it goes on the braise will go in around that. And now I clean it up thoroughly for the brazing.
So that's the brazing finish and I've got a nice witness of braze all the way around the front face of that disc and in that um, chamfered part. The back face is nice and clean still so that will locate nicely on the inside of the chuck on the back plate. Then I've cut off a length of the stainless steel studding, the 10mm studding and I put that into the back here with Loctite 638 covering the threads and let that set. You can braise this part in there if you want to but I found that 638 is good enough. And you want to leave the thread plus in length at first so that when you put it into the spindle you have um, enough length for the um, expanding mandrel at the back or the um, bush that you make up, the washer, an ordinary nut and this nylock locking nut. This one draws the drawbar into the um, chuck and this one locks it together here so that none of them can unscrew.